it's time for Q&A. Should we... Look at your hair. Isn't this a nice place? Yep, it is. So uh, let's start the Q&A. And uh, we got some questions for you guys, from you guys. Have you ever had braces? You have so beautiful teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, I have not had any braces. Why do you have so nice teeth then? <laughs> I uh, brush them every day. That's a good start. Are you still in contact with Emilia Amundsen and uh, how is it going for her uh, with her Mogul skin? So for you guys who don't know who she is, she was my old teammate. Uh, I traveled with her for a lot of years and we skied the World Cup and the Ripple Cup together. Uh, so she actually, for two years ago, she went or moved to the United States to Lake Tahoe um, and uh, started college there. So she does not do moguls anymore. She does do a little bit of uh, slope style. So she's still skiing, but she's not doing any mogul skis. It's difficult for me to keep in contact with all my friends. I try, I really try to, uh, but it's sometimes when you live far away from each other and it's hard to meet up, it's hard to keep in contact. So I try like my closest friends, I try to meet up with as often as I can. It's um, not always so easy to keep in contact with a lot of friends. So, um, so it's sad that we, we lost a bit of contact, but I guess when we meet each other again, we will be close friends. What is your favorite song for the moment? Don't I know what it is. <laughs> Don't kill my vibe. Oh yeah. Is that the one yeah. you're thinking about? <laughs> yeah. It's by Sigri. She's a Norwegian singer. She's really good. What type of other um, sports than mogul skiing do you wish that you were good in? Surfing. But you are good in surfing. Not good enough. We surfed in Morocco, as you know, or some of you might know. If not, you can check out our videos from Morocco. It's link in bio. Uh, anyway, uh, so I, I love surfing and it's, it's a really hard sport. It's like, you need, it's a lot of struggle to get good waves or like you need to paddle a lot and then you need to wait and then maybe the, the guy be, uh, behind or inside of you take the wave and it's like uh, it's not easy it's also a lot of work to get good waves or like to take them and it's hard to take them of course so I think surfing is a sport I want to do more of so I've tried skiing, cross-country skiing, gymnastics, sailing, football, dance Ballet. That was all when I was a baby. But I've done a lot of different sports. So but actually, uh, I want to start to dance, or I want to dance more. Like I want to, um, I want to be better at dancing. I think it's really fun to ha like feel the groove or whatever <laughs> you, you say. Um, but that's really fun. <laughs> It would be fun to like really know how to dance. Okay, so this one is a good one. Um, three good and three bad <laughs> things about you. Okay, good things. I'd say that I am um, really hardworking, and uh, I. So that's one thing, I guess. So I do. I try to fi figure out how to reach a goal, and do everything I can to accomplish it. Uh, I try to see good things uh, in everything, and I try to do that in like my everyday life. I'm really stubborn, but that I, can also be a positive thing. Yeah, but I, I yeah, I, I think so too. But it, it can be a bad thing because if I make a decision or make a choice that's best for me, I can forget the people around me maybe sometimes, and I really try to to be kind and like when we're in a group with my team where we're 10 or 15 people uh, I always think about what's best for me because I need I know what I need to do to be the best or try to be the best in the world in skiing uh, and sometimes I forget about the group something I'm really trying to work on work on because I know it's really important to have good friends in your group and support each other and uh, so that's maybe one thing that I'm working on be that I am stubborn because I think that's always also have been uh, helping me to where I am today. I can be a lot and I know I like I s always say what I mean. I always um, 
speak loud in a way. And I know that could take a lot of space and sometimes I try to listen to people instead of just like talking. Uh, and that's all, also something I'm really trying to be better on, like listen and uh, really listen about what they're saying and not like uh, like coming with my own experiences in that case or uh, just trying to ask more. I have one friend that is she's the best listener and I try to copy her. <laughs> okay, so maybe the third thing that I could be better on, or I'm not patient editing photos or if it's making food or I crush things because everything goes so fast sometimes waiting for people I hate waiting for people and I hate like traffic and uh, I guess everyone does but okay so take a this is a ultimatum but you got um, take a bath outside every single morning or not shower any more than one time in a week in a week <laughs> yeah i would definitely uh go in the water every day outside water uh so like yeah in, sounds like that in the ocean yeah i love swimming in the ocean yeah so. but in the winter don't you think about the winter too it's okay. now it's summer and i don't <laughs> think about the winter um <laughs> so. i mean that would suck <laughs> because like half the winter i am skiing and it's not any uh, places to go in the water. That would be awful. Can you uh, try to remember the last one you sent the message to and what it was on the message? And I will go and check. <laughs> the last one I talked to on message or me messaged with was uh, Astrid. That's wrong. Is it? Yep. One more guess. I can see it here. <laughs> on the Facebook? Yeah. Uh, Panilla? Uh, no, she's the second one. No, the third one. Yeah, okay, so Astrid is the second so one. Astrid is second, Panilla is third, and the first one. Oh, Einar. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> and what did you write? I wrote that his girlfriend can come to my party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How tall are you? I am 160. Well, no, 162. Really? And a half. <laughs> <laughs> and a half. I don't know. 161, 162. I say 162. What's the most weird thing that you ever ate? Maybe the eye of a sheep head. Or an eye to the sheep. What? Did you try Smolohova? <laughs> yes. In Vos, I, smile, I tried Smolohova, which is the sheep head. And um, a cooked sheep head. you get like the head on your plate, half the head. And that's a common Norwegian thing actually, or not common, but it's... In Middle North, I think Middle Norway it is. Um, some say it's a national food, I've never, so I've tried it once. And that was at the World Championships in Vos. Uh, and it, it was okay. I mean, the eye was not very good, it was slimy and you, you can feel that you ate <laughs> an eye. So that's... <laughs> I think that's the weird, weirdest thing I've ever eaten. Can you speak another language than Norwegian? Yes, I can speak English very well, you know? <laughs> yes. And I took French at school and um, I was not very good. I so tried. you can't really speak it? No, I can say um, bonjour, je m'appelle Edwish. I know Edwish is really weird to say, <laughs> but that's the way you speak or say my name in French, I think. I could say, um, uh, tu t'appelles comment? Uh, je voudrais une crêpe avec Nutella, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not very good in French. I, I want to learn it again, or like I want to start with it again. I just didn't have time at high school to learn it, and um, that was sad. Do you want a boyfriend and children? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I want a boyfriend and children one day. Uh, it's a bit funny because when I was younger uh, I said that I want wanted children at the same time as my mom and she had her first or my big brother when she was 23 so I need uh, I need to get started <laughs> <laughs> so my mom had three children before she was 30 and that was kind of what I wanted to because I I thought that was cool I don't know I liked having a young mother mother 
or a younger mother. But now I think uh, not. I think I need a couple of years before I go into that kind of stuff. And maybe a boyfriend too. Yeah, maybe I should start with the boyfriend, boyfriend <laughs> part. <laughs> Is there a lot of people that recognize you on the street in Norway? Um, not that many. Some people do. Uh, what did they say, those who recognized you? They ask if I'm Hedvig from uh, Kulianter. And Kulianter is a series, TV series that I was on with uh, Kari Tra. So I started mogul skiing when Kari Tra uh, made a team, Kari Tra team. We got followed by the camera and they made three seasons and a lot of episodes about us. So I was one of the main persons in that series. And that was kind of my start, or the start of my career, and the start of my mogul skiing. Uh, what camera do you use to take pictures and film with? Okay, so the camera, for the most, I use the Nikon D5500. With uh, my favorite lens is the 50 millimeter, and uh, the 50 millimeter makes uh, you can have the blender down to one point. 1.8 and then you get really blurry photos or like you blurry in the background and the focus is really small like you can have focus on just my nose if I'll close up to my face for example um, and we film for the most with the the Lumix GH4 so nice. the lens to the GH4 is Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter but we change the lenses sometimes or we do a lot uh, and we for filming, we also use GoPro sometimes, and we use the Sony RX100 and the drone, DJI Mavic drone. Uh, you can see every camera we use in under in the link below, or it's not a link, but it's in the in the caption below. Caption. Yeah. We always write what we use. Yes. The last question: um, Can you say more about moguls, uh, your best memories, and when you started? Yes. So I started mogul skiing when I was 11 or 12 years old. Uh, I did alpine skiing and gymnastics and cross country. Then a friend of mine who I did alpine with, uh, she started uh, skiing moguls with the car trot team. So, and I thought that was really fun or it looked funny and she told me that she, the car trot was the coach and they traveled to other places in Norway. And so I joined, I tried one camp and then, uh, then I stayed. <laughs> really funny to like go from alpine skiing, who is a little bit like this, you know, and uh, <laughs> start mogul skiing with uh, traveling with like 20 to 30 girls around Norway and then Sweden and Scandinavia and then Europe. Um, uh, being all girls on a team, staying without parents from 11 years old and ski moguls, do jumps, try backflips and front flips. I think that was, it was just no way back for me because it was such, so much fun. And um, I think the main part, having Kartra as a coach and being a lot of girls together, just having fun on skis was the most important thing for me uh, and what I fell in love with, I guess. So, um, so that's how I started mogul skiing. And like every, in everything I do, I wanted to, wanted I want to be good so I a pretty quick uh, set goals that I wanted to do good and I wanted to win competitions and then uh, suddenly the Olympics was around the corner and I want to go there of course and then and then I did in Sochi uh, and before Sochi I set the goal that I want to win the Olympics uh, and that's what I'm gonna do next year <laughs> and the Q&A with a little tell you guys a little bit about my plans from now on I plan my life I guess around my uh, competitions and camps training camps and I've known actually from a year ago what I'm supposed to do the next two years uh, against the Olympics so now I have uh, after I got home from the US until the next camp I had one month so it's two more weeks uh, of um, summer vacation, which is vacation. I mean, I could stay at my cabin and uh, relax, be with family and friends, but also I, of course, work out almost every day. 
Um, and then I go to Folgefanna, the glacier in Norway, where we, um, the whole team get together again and we ski moguls and jumps and uh, start working on, on the skis again. And I'm really excited for that. Uh, after that, we go to Sweden in Norra, which is kind of my second home. <laughs> uh, after that, we go to Cermatt in Switzerland. I've been actually to Cermatt every year for almost 10 years in a row. So that's all also a really nice place to go to and you know you know where or we know everything about the city and we know what to expect and I think that's important for us athletes to uh be comfortable where we are. So we are in Sermat for three weeks. And after that we have two or three weeks at home and then we go to Caprun in Austria, which is our last training camp before the World Cup season. Are there for three weeks and we've also been there for three years in a row now. It's a really nice place, not really much to do other than skiing, but that's that's okay. So after that I guess it's World Cup season and we go to, before Christmas we are in Finland, France and China and after Christmas we're in US, Canada and then the Olympics in Korea. Uh, to be the best you can is all you can do and if you you set a goal and you believe that you can reach that goal and you can see you reaching that goal uh, then I think it's all, all all you can do every day is to do, make the right choices choices for you and uh, maybe it's not the right thing in the book but if you believe that you make the right choices all the time I think that's the best you can do and uh, that's what I'm trying to do <laughs> A lot of talking, <laughs> yeah. But I just started, and then it kept on going. So, but I think that's a good end of this uh, Q and A. And I hope you got some answers. Uh, if it's anything more you want to know, just uh, send me an email or write a comment or whatever you like. Have a good day. Have a good night or morning or whatever you are. Um, hope you enjoy the summer and do. Um, uh, and do the best of it, have fun, and be happy. Ha <laughs> <laughs>